Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about ChatGPT or all of these kind of AI things that are out there. And ChatGPT is a generative model that tries to figure out what's the next word in a sentence is, pretty much. So it takes a large corpus of data and a large training set and it tries to generate more text for you in a way that is expected from the data it has learned before. And when you are using ChatGPT, there are certain guidelines, guardrails and so on that is set up and you can create these when you are creating your own chat. So if we switch over to my screen here, I have my chat here. And it says that this is an assistant. You are a helpful assistant that tries to educate the user about computer hardware. And what I'm actually doing is when I priming or sending this message in, it's pretty much the JSON down here. So the role is system. So I say that the system says this. So I pretty much tell the AI what it already knows. And that this is the message. When you want to send something is in as a user, you change the role to user, and when the reply comes back, you send that in as a system again. So you, if you say here, hi, how are you? It would respond in a very typical way because it's gonna talk about computer hardware. So it says, hello, you're do uh, I'm doing well, thank you. How can I assist you today? Are you looking to learn more about computer hardware? So that is because I've already primed it about uh, <laughs> what it would want to talk about up here. Then I can say um, how much CPU goop uh, um, do I need on my uh, in my computer. Let's see if it can f understand what I'm actually talking about here. It's not really that clear to me even. So if we send that in, if see if it uh, understand what what I'm talking about. Yeah, so it's actually <laughs> applying terminal paste, often referred to as CPU goop, is <laughs> a crucial efficient way to transfer CPU to its cooler. And then it gives me a long response here. And I'm adding that to my response down here. So what I've said and what it said. And, and then it says here, mount a cooler. Uh, how do I know the right pressure to mount my cooler? And then send that back in. And then you will get another response. And it just continues to add up to that. So yeah, so you get even more information here. So writing a chatbot isn't that hard. You pretty much need to keep track on this context and send it back in every time that you have a chat message. And this context here is a bunch of characters that is sent into the AI and or the ChatGPT. And this context at the moment for a paid model, I think you can have uh, 2 million characters in this context and for a non-paid account you can have about 1 million characters. So if you want to send in a huge document then it will not fit into this context so you can't really train on that. And uh, There is other things you can do in order to simplify and summarize information and create a smaller context that you can ask later on. So there is methods around that. But let's look at the code, but this is simply how it works. So if you want to implement one, you could pretty much do and want to do it your own. You pretty much need to follow these uh, small guidelines and then you can do it yourself. But let's look at the code just so you know how impl I implemented it here. So first off, we have the JavaScript code here. We have this input area. We have the chat area where I show the chat. We have a send button and then we have communication where, where I keep this context and you can of course hide the context for the user it's not something that they need to see i just wanted to be transparent and show you what's actually going on here so i change uh, set up these kind of elements up here and then on the send button when i click it 
it will go through and do a bunch of stuff here. First off, we will set this communication to red so I know that something is triggered and happening. And then I will fetch all the messages and I will add a new message here that the user says something and the actual content comes from the, content, from the input. Then I will just create a data object here where I send the messages over as message to this chat PHP. And then I stringify that and post it over. When I get something back, I will get something in body choices. And you could say that you can get multiple choices for an answer. You can say I want two answers, three answers, five answers, ten answers to my question. And then you pick the choice. But because I'm just getting one answer, I say choice number zero, the message content. I want to get that. And then I put that into my message array here as a system message. I know that the assistant said that. And then I will uh, set that into my communication and change the border style here. And then I will display the chat. So displaying the chat is pretty much parsing this communication array and creating a new article. And for each message I have, I will create a new speech bubble pretty much. And if the speaker is a user, I will set a blue context on the user. Otherwise, I will set the red context of the assistant. And then I will just add that up as a message here into speech, the inner HTML. And then I will append that to speech. And the chat needs to be cleared, of course. And then I append the output in there. So the JavaScript code is not that complicated. And the chat will not be that either. So if we look at the chat call here, pretty much we take the JSON in here from the input. We get check that we have a message. Then we will create a request here with the model uh, GPT-4.0. So if you don't have a paid account, you can use GPT-3 here. But I have a pay, paid account, so I will use a 4.0. And then you have messages where you send in that message array that we saw earlier. So just a JSON with these kind of system user messages back and forth. And then we say that I want one response back. So the, this you can change to 10 if you want. And then you have this request JSON that you get back. So I just fetch that. Uh, or this is the request JSON I create from this request. And then we have the headers here, so authorization bearer. And this is the open API key. You get that from your dashboard at open API. And then we do a curl call to API, open API com, version one of their API, chat completions. We will post that with the headers and the request JSON. And then we will get a result back. If you haven't seen my curl call, this is very simple uh, wrapper for the curl. Uh, command so we will push on a couple of things here you can actually say chat here uh, I had this in the YouTube before so we will send in application JSON we have a particular content length we have a user agent and then we will uh, do an init here with the URL we will set custom request method and then we will set that we want a return transfer so we want a response the post field should just be the data we send in, the HTTP headers are the headers. Then we will fetch the response, we will fetch an error, an info, and then close that. Upon any errors, we will set the response that we get the particular response code and the message of that error. Otherwise, uh, we will just return with uh, the response and the HTTP code here. So that is a wrapper message that I use for my curl calls. So this was everything that I wanted to show you today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you're using ChatGPT in any kind on, in your profession or at uh, uh, just playing around uh, on your own, please leave a comment in the comment section down below telling me how you are using ChatGPT. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down there as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.